On this Veterans Day, as we honor military veterans of the United States Armed Forces, let's focus on some specific memories of World War II. Its sights and sounds, its terrors and triumphs are disappearing every day due to the unavoidable process of aging. 90% of the men and women who fought and won the great conflict have died. But according to the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs statistics, 167,284 of them of the 16 million Americans who served in World War II are alive in 2022. They are now in their 90s or older. However, they are dying quickly. Today, let's take a hard look at the simple yet unpopular truth. America did not keep its promise to all of the greatest generation. While we can't make it right, we can at least honor one overlooked and underappreciated group of World War II veterans. 1.2 million black servicemen and women were among the 16 million Americans, united but unequal, who answered the call to defend our country and protect democracy abroad. One of these veterans who answered the call was my father, John Mills Holloway, born November 17, 1924 in Durham County, North Carolina. He passed on November 6, 2000. After devoting 42 years of his life to a professional career as a chief fiscal officer in higher education. Let's take a look at some of the items associated with his status as a veteran. These are his army identification tags along with a cross. This flag was from the Veterans Administration. It was given to his wife Doris, my mother, at his funeral. And these are some of his World War II military patches, pins, and medals. These are technician third grade patches. U.S. Third Army Patch Central Round A in a circle, red, white, and blue. Fourth Army patch, white four-leaf clover. Combat service stripe, three bars for 18 months. Medal of Honor for rifle, carbine. European, African, Middle Eastern campaign medal. Pin ribbon bar, two battle stars, and one battle star. A medal for good conduct, and the American campaign medal. Some of the other items saved from his time in combat in Europe was this lady's handkerchief from Brussels, Belgium. He bought this for his mother, Zelma Holloway, along with a necklace from the Eiffel Tower in Paris, France. While my father and other black soldiers had time to enjoy the sights and sounds in Europe, African-American soldiers like my father were fighting the world's worst racist, Adolf Hitler, while serving in the world's most segregated army. This terrible irony existed here in the U.S. and in North Carolina as well. For those African Americans who did enlist or were drafted, segregation was a fact of life in all branches of the military during World War II. Yet in the face of discrimination and often harsh treatment, all black units trained for combat and support at bases across North Carolina. I knew that the uh, Marine base was in North Carolina, and I figured that would put me closer to home. Hubert Poole of Raleigh had five brothers in the Army, so he decided to join the Marines at the only African-American Marine base in the country, Monford Point. They break you down to nothing. They make you feel like you are nobody. You yes sir, nobody, everybody. That you ran everywhere because they're going to eventually bring you around to be a Marine and be proud of the Marine. My father, John Mills Holloway, was among the 900,000 black service members who returned home from the war only to receive a welcome message that was essentially, thank you, but no thank you for your service. Even worse, in North Carolina and throughout the Jim Crow South, home to three quarters of the black service members, Many attacked these veterans when they sought to exercise the very freedoms for which they had fought. After victory in World War II, black veterans continued the fight for freedom at home. These men who had sacrificed so much for the country faced racist attacks in 1946 as they laid the groundwork for the civil rights movement to come. That year, 1946, proved a turning point for black resistance to legal segregation in America, in large part because of the efforts of black veterans. In the face of assaults, lynchings, and police brutality, these Americans stood at the vanguard. That was 76 years ago when they mounted challenges to long denied access to housing, employment, political participation, and social integration. 
They made 1946 the true birth of the civil rights movement. Thousands and thousands of black veterans were denied their GI Bill benefits. Dartmouth historian Matthew Delmont. Veterans had to go to their local Veterans Administration offices. Um, these were staffed almost exclusively by white officials. And this is a particular problem in the South. So what specifically were they denied? They were denied access to mortgages, and they were denied uh, college tuition to be able to go to college and earn degrees that could help them get good jobs afterwards. Decade of growth in American history. Denied a chance to participate in the post-war economic boom, which saw white wealth surge and black wealth barely keep up with inflation. For white veterans, the GI Bill helped them uh, become members of the middle class. For many black veterans, the exact opposite was true. Um, because they couldn't buy homes, they couldn't go to college, they lost that opportunity to join the middle class. But at the same time, discriminatory practices and prejudiced state and local officials barred black families from fully accessing those same benefits. Racially biased lending practices, known as redlining, prevented many black veterans from accessing home loans. Segregation and quota systems prohibited many of them from attending well-funded, predominantly white universities. Thousands of black soldiers, like my father, instead went to segregated, underfunded black institutions and vocational schools because he was not allowed to attend in-state schools like UNC Chapel Hill, NC State, or even Duke University, where my dad's father, my grandfather, J. Sim Holloway, worked as the chauffeur for the university's president. These systematic inequalities limited their opportunity to accumulate wealth. The unequal implementation of the GI Bill continues to have an impact on my and my children's generation today. What does that mean today? Well, during the first quarter of 2022, the average black family had 24 cents for every dollar of wealth held by white families. That's according to the Federal Reserve Bank. The unfair treatment of African-American veterans of World War II is one of the greatest racial justice issues of our time. My generation may not be responsible for this injustice, but we can take responsibility for fixing it. And Congressman exactly Seth Moulton, a former Marine who went to Harvard on today's GI Bill, is one of the authors of legislation that would try to make up for all that lost opportunity. Descendants, direct descendants of these Black World War II veterans would be eligible for VA housing loans, and their grandkids would be eligible for education benefits. I'm Walter Gaskin, Secretary of North Carolina Department of Military and Veterans Affairs. North Carolina's African-American community has answered the call of duty in every American military engagement in U.S. history. These and countless other African Americans from North Carolina have triumphed over oppression and injustice to make contributions not only in our state's military history, but even more importantly to our American history and deserve to have their stories told. That is why the North Carolina Department of Military and Veterans Affairs joined forces with the North Carolina Department of Natural and Cultural Resources, the State Archives, and the North Carolina Museum of History to launch the African American Military and Veterans Lineage Project to allow the public to experience this history. We hope you will join us and learn more about the journeys of black soldiers throughout military history. If you are a veteran and would like to share your experience, please contact us. Visit ncafamlineage.com to learn more about this effort and to learn how to contribute to our collection.